Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson one of the Suck Shoot series of my ARM assembly programming tutorials. Well, what is Suck Shoot? Well, Suck Shoot is the little game that you can see here. Basically, this is an extension of the simple series where we had a, an example where we could move a sprite around the screen. It was a little smiley with a joystick. We've extended that up to a full game here. So basically, we've now got a crosshair we move around the screen, and we've got these flying bats that get closer to the player as time progresses. And what we need to do is we need to move our cursor over the bat, and we need to shoot the bat before what just happens happens, which is we get bit and we lose a life. Now the lives are in the corner of the screen up here. So every time we get bitten, the lives go down. And eventually, once we run out of lives, we will get a game over message and we will be told if we've got a high score or not. So that's how the game works. Very simple little game, just as an example really. Now, this is the Game Boy Advance version, but I've also already ported it to the Nintendo DS. And I'm hoping to get a copy working on ViscoS as well. Now, basically this is split into two parts. We've got the common code and then we've got the sprite code. And so what we're going to do today Today, so we're going to look at the common code, the general code that works is without too many changes on all of the systems. So we're going to discuss the general parts in this tutorial, and then in a second lesson later on, we're going to cover the Game Boy Advance sprite code that handles the platform-specific parts of that machine. Okay, well, let's go over to our source code and let's take a look. Now, of course, you can download the source code for today's example from my website, and as I always say, you're welcome to use it in any way you can. So we're looking at GBA suck shoot here, and we're going to check that out. Okay, so the first thing you can see here is we've got some definitions of some variables and these are these enemy data variables are set to a memory address base, and this is the variables that define the enemy bat. We've got a cursor X and a cursor Y. These are actually not the player's cursor, these are the text cursor. This is for the text drawing routines. We've got a score and a high score. These are four bytes each in binary coded decimal. I've got a tutorial on binary coded decimal in the multi-platform series, which is I wrote because I needed it for this, basically. We've got a set of lives, a life count, which is a single BCD byte. And we've got a sound timeout, which is a counter until the sound is silenced. We use Chibi Sound, the simple driver I wrote before to do the sound in this game. We've also got a random seed and I've got a random number tutorial in my multi-platform series as well. And I also covered the range checking, which again was for this tutorial, for this example code here. So that's what we've got here. We've got some code here to start up for the Game Boy Advance here. Uh, the first thing we're going to look at today, though, is the actual show title routine here, which is going to show the title screen, which you can see just here. So this is going to show this here. So the first thing we're doing here is we're clearing the screen. We've got a clear screen routine and we're silencing the sound, setting the sound time at zero. We're then locating the text cursor and we're showing the suck shoot message, which is the text announcing the title of the game here, 255 terminated as I always use in my tutorials. So we're showing the suck shoot message here. We're showing the text of the high score message here and we're just locating that down towards the bottom of the screen. And then the line below, we're showing the high score using our BCD show routine, which I covered in the multi-platform series last time. So that's showing the text for the title screen. What we're going to do next is we're going to show the bat. Now here are the game sprites and the bat sprites have basically three different scales and two frames of animation for each scale. And so we're going to have to um, accommodate that in our code. Now, usually this will work from a scale from basically 16 to 48, but because we want the bat to be as big as possible, we're setting the scale to 48 here. And we're setting the enemy scale offset from R11 with R11 pointing to the enemy data here. And we're also setting the X and Y position to be the center of the screen here. Now these will need to change depending on the platform, depending on the size of the screen, for example. But basically we're gonna do pretty much the same thing. And then on the title screen, the bat is going to flap its wings. So we need to animate the sprite. And we, that means we need to change the sprite number. And we basically toggle this between zero and one. And we're doing that with an Eeyore here. So that's flipping between the two frames of animation for the larger scale. Now the sprite routines use XOR or Eeyore, which means we're inverting the contents of the screen. The reason for this is that means we can draw our sprite twice to the same position and the second time we'll remove the sprite the first one drew. So basically what we have here is we're showing the sprite here, we're waiting a while with this pause routine, and then we're showing the sprite again, but effectively we're taking it off the screen. We're then running a read joystick routine. Now this is a um, standardized version, which will load in bits for up, down, left, right, fire one, fire two, and then any of the fire buttons or other buttons available. So we're checking fire one here, and we're just repeatedly showing the title screen, repeatedly updating the animation until the player presses fire. When the player presses fire, we're jumping to the gameplay loop, which is just here. So we're going to start a new game. 
First of all, we're clearing the screen. Then we're loading the pointer to the enemy data. We're setting the default speed for the enemy. The enemy gets faster every time we shoot it. And we are resetting the score here, zeroing the four bytes of the score here, setting the player's lives to four here. And then we're randomizing the start position for the enemy and drawing the initial score and lives to the screen. Player X and Y are stored in R8 and R9 throughout this routine. And we're starting off by showing the initial position for the player and the enemy. Now we get into the main game loop here. And the first thing we're doing is we're set checking the sound timeout. Now the sound timeout is used by Chibi Sound. Chibi Sound we pass a single byte, which is a sound parameter, which can be a noise or beep effect. When we send a zero, that silences the sound. But depending on how long we want the sound to be, we will set a sound timeout. So what we're doing here is we're decreasing the sound timeout until it reaches zero. When it reaches zero, we're calling Chibi Sound to si silence the sound. That's what we're doing there. Okay. So here is our main loop here, and we're reading in the joystick, and this is getting the directions. What we're then doing is we're running the show player routine, which because the sprite is already on the screen, we'll take it off, because remember XOR, we draw twice, we take it off the second time. We're now going to set our movement speed. We're setting it to two here, but then we're checking fire two, and if fire two is pressed, we're increasing that to four. So we can hold down fire two to move our cursor faster. That's what we're doing. Then what we've got here is pretty similar to the simple series joystick example. The only difference is we've changed the bit order because our read joystick routine is reading in, in a common format on all systems, which is going to reduce the amount of reprogramming needed later. Again, as before, we're checking our ranges. Our ranges are different now because our sprite is bigger, but we've got our range checking here and we're limiting our sprite to the screen. Okay, we're now showing the new player position and we're now removing the old enemy position. And now what we're going to do is we're going to update the enemy bat. The first thing we're doing is we're checking the player's fire buttons and seeing if the player has tried to shoot the bat. If they have, then we're going to update the sound timeout and we're going to make a sound for the player shooting. What we're then going to do is we're going to get the X and Y position of the player, the X and Y position of the enemy, and we're going to define a range of the blast. And then we're going to use our range test function here to see if the player has successfully shot the bat. If they haven't, we're going to jump to no hit. But if they have, we're going to kill the bat and we're going to update it. So the first thing we're doing is we're speeding up the bat because the next bat's going to be stronger. It's going to be harder for our player. We change the chibi sound. We make a different sound for when the players hit the bat. And we add five points to our score. And the player gets some score there. We then update the score and we then re-randomize a new position for the enemy. And that randomize function also resets the size of the enemy and um, things like that. So that resets all of the enemy settings there. Okay. Now that's um, updating the enemy for when the enemy shot. But what about what the, the enemy's normal operations? Well, we've got a counter called enemy data tick here, and we repeatedly add 64 to this. When it goes over 255, then we want to update the frame of animation for the bat. So that's how fast the enemy bat is animating. Now, beyond the flapping animation, we also want to update the bat getting closer to the player. And this is controlled by enemy speed, which is the current speed of the bat, and speed B, which is the counter for the next tick in which the enemy bat will get closer. So we're just processing those there. And when that goes over 255, um, that's because it was originally single byte code. And that's because this code was ported from the 6809 where this game originated. Um, and if the bat needs to be updated when then we're adding eight to the scale now this doesn't immediately increase the scale but repeated ticks will do so when the enemy bat gets to size 64 the bat has basically bitten the player so in this case we randomize a new position for the enemy but we don't speed the enemy up because the player isn't doing very well already we then remove one life from the player's lives and we jump to game over if the player has run out of lives. We then update the sound timer and we make a biting sound of sorts and we update the score now, not because the player's got any score, but because that routine also updates the lives. At the end of this routine, we then show the new position for the enemy and we then pause before repeating the main game loop. Okay, so that's the entire main game loop. Our game over routine, this is when the player has finally run out of lives, pretty straightforward. We've got a function wait for release, which waits for fire button to be released because we will test for fire to um, go back to the main menu, silence any sound, clear the screen, and then we're going to show the first game over message, which just says game over at the top of the screen. What we do next is we're comparing the score and the high score here. And if the player has got a score higher than the current high score, we are going to update the high score. 
So what we do here, we store the new high score to the high score, and then we show a second message to the screen, and the message says new high score. So we're congratulating the player there. The final thing we do here is we're reading him from the joystick, waiting for the fire button to be pressed, and we're just waiting there until it is pressed. When it is, we're jumping to show title. Now, if the player didn't get a high score, then we don't do any high score updating, but we show a text string to the screen all the same. The text string is, however, different. Instead of saying new high score, we tell them you suck because they do suck. So we, we don't want to um, let them off lightly with that. OK, so that's what we're doing there. The update score routine, very straightforward. We're just locating and showing some binary coded decimal to the screen here. The do pause is just a super stupid counter. It just loops until reaching zero. We've got our show enemy and sprite routines. We're going to discuss that next time, though. The ranged random and the range checking, we've covered that in the multi-platform series, so please see those if you need to see how they work. That's actually all we're going to be covering today. So as I said before, you can go to my website and you can download this program. And as I would say, you're welcome to make any use of it. You can you know, build it into the best game ever, make Suck Hunt 2000 and sell it for $100 billion. I really don't care. Have some fun with it. Anyway, I ho hopefully you'll like and subscribe, because if you like the videos, YouTube recommends them to more people and I have a happy day and if you don't I have a sad day and I cry myself to sleep. If you subscribe you'll see the next video and the next video will show you how the sprites work on the Game Boy Advance and then later the Nintendo DS and hopefully if I can be bothered to make it the Risk OS one so please make sure you subscribe. Anyway thanks for watching today and goodbye.